Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to build upon a subject that I have been on for a while. And don't worry if you've missed it. We're going to catch you all up and get you all on the same page. But specifically, I've been talking about the vagus nerve, which is a super critical nerve for our parasympathetic nervous system. And what I want to do is discuss three of my favorite essential oils that help to support the vagus nerve so that this nerve can optimize its functioning in which it can also support all of the critical functions of your body because the vagus nerve actually helps regulate all of your essential vital organs considering the heart, the brain, the lungs, the gut, to name just a few. So let's back up a little bit and talk a little bit about the vagus nerve. As I mentioned, it is very, very, very essential for our overall functioning. It is a master regulator of the autonomic nervous system, the, specifically the parasympathetic nervous system, which is a part of this nervous system. There's three branches from this nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, which controls our subconscious processes. And one of them is the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest. Another is a sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight. And then there is the enteric nervous system, which is what happens in our gut. Okay, so the vagus nerve really predominates about 75% it is in charge of, of the parasympathetic nervous system. And what is interesting is the functions of the vagus nerve have actually been indicated in this innovative ther therapy, specifically the polyvagal therapy that actually helps somebody to recover or to get better from trauma. So how this is done is that when the body is in a in a state of parasympathetic dominance or rest or digest, what they call the ventral vagal state, it actually is able to heal and to rest and to restore. And when you're in that state, you're also more apt to create healthy social relationships. When you create healthy social relationships, you feel more safe. And again, it perpetuates the cycle of healing, restoration, and repair. So What's so cool is, let me roll this in with essential oils that we're going to discuss today, is that essential oils are known, many of them are known as calming to the mind and body, and that they have various ways that they can calm these subconscious processes, right? When we are stressed out and we breathe an essential oil that's calming, it can actually help to maybe moderate our breathing right? Because we're inhaling, we're taking a deep breath. It can help slow down our heart rate if it's sped up. It can help our blood pressure. Blood pressure naturally rises when we're stressed. It can help lower. Some of these oils have been shown to help lower blood pressure. So it is an amazing tool that I think is underutilized. And the applications for essential oils, as well as the different mechanisms and how they impact our mind body uh, is incredible, right? When we discovered how much stress has a physiological, in other words, how it impacts all of our body processes, we had discovered this huge link that if we decrease stress, we can really help raise somebody's health and bring them into the state of more optimized functioning, right? And so it isn't it isn't a small deal to say that something relieves stress and in doing so also influences our physiology. Essential oils do that because they emotionally, right, just the sense of smell or, or aroma alone can impact the brain, impact memory. They emotionally calm our stress response, right? They help our brain settle down. We get, they directly connect to the amygdala, which is the emotional part of our brain. Our body relaxes. It's able to move some of this fight or flight response calm it down and move us into a more rational state, right? Into the executive functioning part of the brain so that we can make these critical decisions without being under this stress attack of various stress neurotransmitters. So it, it calms all that down. And while it's doing that, there's also these chemical constituents within essential oils that actually modulate our physiology, 
right? So they actually can impact something called heart rate variability, right? So heart rate variability is a measurement between heart rates. And this is an indirect measurement of your parasympathetic nervous system. So your parasympathetic nervous system is in charge of your heart rate. And when someone has a higher heart rate variability, there's larger fluctuations that's been said to be an optimal heart rate variability. So we can measure parasympathetic nervous system by the heart rate variability. Another thing that we can just in general discuss as far as if parasympathetic nervous system is impacted by any intervention is maybe breath rate, respiration rate, cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone. Uh, we can also know people's blood pressure, if it goes up or if it goes down. These are different ways to indicate the physiological response. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through three specific essential oils that I've used in clinical practice that have also support in current literature. Now, some of the studies we know are smaller in the natural health field than we'd like them to be. There isn't a lot of, let's say, funding, right, for natural products because you can't patent them and make a lot of money. But there is some clinical evidence for these essential oils in modulating our parasympathetic nervous system, and then based on traditional use. So we have all of these three different factors that have made me chose, or have, I should say, compelled me to choose these three main essential oils for vagus nerve support, parasympathetic nerve relief, relaxation and getting us out of that fight or flight state. So this will help people with stress. It'll help them if they're feeling a little bit on the anxious side, if their mood is low, if they're just, their body is revved up. These essential oils would be three of the top essential oils that I would choose. And these are just single oils. There's a lot of blends I use in my practice. That's a whole other discussion. But let's look into these essential oils. Now, the first oil that I selected was lavender essential oil. Probably not a big aha moment, right? Many people, when they think of aromatherapy and they think of calming, they think of lavender oil. So lavender oil is obviously the most well-known for relaxation to calm the stress response. It's been used for sleep. It also has some properties to inhibit certain microbes and help with infections. It can be relieving to muscles and help soothe, soothe muscle tension, both, both voluntary muscle as well as smooth muscle. And it's been shown to help support the immune system. So all of these different properties of essential oil based not just on their smell, properties or their odor properties, but the chemical constituents within the lavender essential oil. Remember, essential oils have many different compounds within them. So they have many different effects. And that's why when you talk about an essential oil and you say it can help from anything from mood to sleep to infection protection, that's why. Okay. Now there was a comprehensive review just on lavender and how it impacts the nervous system. And that the overall view was that it was calming. It, it actually, studies were both animal studies in vitro, so that means in the Petri dish, as well as human studies. And what they found is from animal studies is that lavender oil actually modulated your neurotransmitters. So different neurotransmitters, brain signals, dopamine, GABA, serotonin. Those were all impacted in these little in these little rodents' bodies, brains. Okay. Preclinical as well as clinical trials have shown that lavender actually supports sleep, it supports pain, it supports mood. And human studies have demonstrated changes in the brain when inhaling the oil. So that's another sign of parasympathetic nervous system calming. When we look at brainwave activity and we see that the brain is actually in a more of a resting state, an alpha state, 
that is a sign of relaxation and more dominance to the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, I did find studies on lavender oil and specifically measurements of heart rate variability. Remember, heart rate variability is an indirect measure of parasympathetic nervous system. I did list and I went into great detail several of these studies. There were two that I found specifically. And overall, they did, you know, they did one, one study tested anxiety rating scales. They tested heart rate variability. They tested galvanelic skin response. Overall, it was found that lavender did impact heart rate variability, but the results were transient, and it was more in a female population, which is interesting because there were several caveats to both of these studies. One was dosage. We know that when uh, you're using an essential oil, the effect is pretty, pretty immediate, right? And peak levels in the studies for lavender were found in the first study to be between 10 to 15 minutes. So they gave the lavender oil in a stressful situation, and not surprisingly, immediately after the heart rate variability was impacted, but not in the long term. My argument for that is, this is why you need to dose optimally, right? This is why we need to continually use essential oils throughout as our body and brain is rebalancing and we get this state into the state of restoration and restoring. It's not just going to be you smell at one time and all of a sudden, long-term rate, you know, two days later, your heart rate variability changes. This is a nervous system intervention. And when you do that, there's some training involved, right? Nobody ever just goes to the gym one time and expects all of a sudden for them to be strong. So the that's one of the big kind of blocks I find in a lot of essential oil studies. They're, they're using the essential oil. Maybe their intervention is like twice a week instead of every day, or, you know, maybe it's a really low dosage for just a short period of time, or maybe it's like this weird way that they're using essential oils, like heating it up or, or putting it on a block in the corner. I, I've read studies where they put it on a block in a corner of a room. It's just strange, some of them. It's just not how you normally use essential oils, which are usually diffusion. And if you're going to, quite frankly, if it's going to be for an emotional response, you definitely want to inhale and take that time to inhale it for longer than 20 seconds, right? 30, 30 seconds at least to really get into the system. So overall, lavender, if we just look at lavender, a lot of studies, preclinical and clinical, uh, related to how it affects your parasympathetic nervous system. It calms the brain and the body down. And a couple of studies with caveats that support that it impacts heart rate variability. The second oil that I've chosen is bergamot oil. Bergamot oil is one of my favorites, especially for people who have a history of trauma. It is really good for lowering that cortisol response. It is. Um, it was shown in a pretty decent study to, again, affect heart rate variability while it decreased cortisol. Again, short-term intervention, again, for those same reasons, I believe. It uh, also was found to reduce fatigue scores as well as negative emotions. This study was with 41 young females. Now, in general, when they do baseline rates in these studies, if there are is a male population, they tend to have a lower anxiety rate, you know, at baseline. So the changes are harder to see than if the if the anxiety was higher to begin with and then it went down. So that's also something to keep in mind. So bergamot, lots of again studies on how it impacts EEG. There's clinical studies for there, how it impacts mood, calms anxiety. There's clinical human studies on how it affects heart rate and blood pressure. So again, when we have all this combination combined with a traditional use of bergamot oil, we can see that it is calming to the vagus nerve and could probably be a big support for that. So we have lavender, we have bergamot, my third essential oil. I actually use this oil every day along with lavender and I do use bergamot uh, regularly, not every day, but lavender and ylang ylang essential oil. I just love the smell. Ylang ylang is very uplifting. It's an actual citrus oil. So again, citrus, we want to be careful of not wearing this oil out in the sun because of the phytotoxicity, right? So that just means it changes the color of your skin when you're out in the sun for a long period of time. But ylang ylang actually, again, lots of study, I shouldn't say, when I say lots, I don't want to uh, 
mislead you into thinking there's like 100 or 300 studies. Several studies that are very, uh, very impressive with ylang-ylang showing, mostly in male populations actually in this oil, coming to the heart, uh, specifically lowering blood pressure and also showing changes in EKG levels, so heart rate, okay, that's an electrocardiogram. There were several studies with that with inhalation. They found, uh, one study found a cross association between the pleasantness, if the peop if the subjects actually like the smell of the oil and how good the results were for lowering the blood pressure, as well as their response for skin temperature and other physiological parameters, pulse rate, breathing rate. They all had a positive response when they inhaled it, but the people who liked the smell had a more positive response, which again, we're going into something that's pleasant is way more calming to your nervous system than if you don't like the smell, right? Even if it has a biochemistry to it, if we're combining that synergy, you're going to get a greater response. So there, you know, there were several studies I listed. Um, you can find these studies with the references and the links in the accompanying article. And I go into the caveats if you're interested in that with as far as when I broke down and I really looked at those studies and dug into them, looked at why they could have gotten a better response, say if they used a higher dose or what some of the caveats were to that. So you want to check that out. I also, um, I added two honorable mentions because while I was searching essential oils and heart rate variability, one came up with a really cool study on pedigree oil. Now I have not used this oil much except in blends in my practice, but they did use it. And I thought it was something to mention to you guys because it was about for work stress. And they used 42 administrative university workers as their subjects. And they had them inhale this oil for 20 to 25 minutes. They used a diffuser. So what I found interesting is, hey, they're actually doing a study where the application is something we actually do in real life. So it's translatable. And they used uh, study or they, they use study measurements with um, stress, uh, anxiety trait, and heart rate variability. And they found positive in each of those, in each of those areas. And um, so that would be maybe a good one to try. And again, it's not really in my essential oil uh, toolkit. So I would love to hear your response on if you've used petty grain oil. Now, fur oils is another honorable mention because there is a lot of information. There is a lot of information on how nature and these phytocides from trees, which are from fur oils, actually impact our stress response, lower our stress response, and help calm us down. That is known as forest bathing in Japan, which they actually use as a therapeutic intervention for people with stress and burnout. So fur oils would be, again, on the list. Didn't find much as far as heart rate variability. Feel free if I missed studies, you know, you guys, you can always post that in the comments. I always like to learn and we can go back and forth with that. So be sure to let me know about that. And those are the, those are the oils for, for modulating our vagus nerve. And I think that you'll see from what I discussed that indirectly impacting heart rate variability, we got lavender, ylang ylang and bergamot, and also all how they impact just parasympathetic nervous system in general. And remember, when you're in this state of rest and rest, rest and restoration and repair, that's when your body can repair, right? When you're calmed down. And also when you will tend to feel safe to reach out to other people, which is essential for healing from trauma and feeling safe and perpetuating the cycle of rest and repair and safety and all of that. Remember the, the impacts of isolation are very detrimental to our health. So essential oils just have this multitude of effects on our body and our brain in very good ways. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed this video on how essential oils can support your nervous system, specifically your parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest part of the nervous system that is known as the vagus nerve and how it has been shown in several studies that lavender, bergamot, and ylang-ylang 
can definitely modulate and calm us down on a physiological as well as a psychological level. If you have any questions or comments, please put those in the video description or on the accompanying article blog, and I will be sure to go through them. The best way to support this channel as well as to get the information out there is free. You just subscribe or you like the video and pass it on, and that would be a great favor to me if you could do that as well as if you want to check out any more additional information about how I use essential oils, naturopathic medicine, and functional medicine in my practice to optimize the mind and the body. I have a specific focus, obviously, on mental health, on hormonal health, and gastrointestinal health, and they're all interwoven. You can go ahead and head over to the resource section again in the description. Thank you for your time. I'm going to have an exciting announcement coming out within the next few videos. So there might be a little change to this channel, but I'll still be in and out, but it might be a little bit of a different flavor on how I'm going to be presenting the videos because I have a new project that I think you guys are going to like, and it's going to contain some amazing content for you. But I will be focusing on that as that gets launched and also, you know, still coming in here and joining you on, on the YouTube channel and in the videos and all of that as well. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe so you know what's going on. And I will see you again real soon. Remember to take really good, gentle care of yourself because you're worth it. And I appreciate you.